sweet. Okay, so um, we've been in this, we just started this series called Windows of Heaven. Hey, let me just pause. I'm, I'm kind of just still going fast. Let me pause and say welcome, you know, and I'm Pastor Nate. Glad to be here. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad I made it. And, um, and we're in a series uh, for the next three weeks, and I believe it's probably one of the most important things. Uh, if we could get this, it's how God has given us um, his provision in our lives. There's windows of heaven. That's the title of the series, windows of heaven. In other words, there's access to more uh, in our lives than just what we have uh, by our hands. And um, when I give, i got to remember, you know, we just received tithes and offerings today. But when I give, I don't give to man. I give to God. And every time I give, I'm acknowledging where I draw from. I'm acknowledging my source. Yes. And so this is what we're talking about. We're talking about um, not to manipulate, but to understand. Um, you know, and, and a lot of times when there's truths in God's word that uh, somebody will, uh, because they are true, uh, will use them to our advantage. The Bible talks about how man is drawn away by their own lust. In other words, lust always wants more. And so when any time, you know, you can, you can uh, maybe make, uh, make money off of something or do good, you, people are going to manipulate that to, to their self-advantage. It's just human, you know, flesh, right? And so there are truths, like uh, you even see this principle in the Bible when, when this guy was like, hey, I want to buy the Holy Spirit. <laughs> He's like, because I want to make money off of that, because, you know, I can sell that. And then the, he, give, the, he could see the, the evidence of help in people's lives, and he said, I want to buy that so I can sell that, you know, and, uh, and the Lord rebuked him for that. But uh, anyway, and so we're talking about, um, in the next couple of weeks, just about windows of heaven, just this an aware, awareness of where your help comes from. Matter of fact, that's this morning's title, uh, Lift My Eyes. I will lift my eyes. I think I, t- I actually title it, Lift Up My Eyes. But I will lift up my eyes to where my help comes from. And this is this, this, is this, whole, this whole series, is that just the access to more help. You know, that there are windows, that there's doors. And it's other, in other words, just right here, just in a sense, right, right where we are, um, we have access to the help of the Lord. But there's ways that we access that. There's doors, there's windows, and, and, and we, we see in the Word, and we talked about this a little bit last week, multiple different places. Um, and, and this is why it's important to look at different scriptures and not just, and let me hear, hear me out on this. Sometimes I've heard somebody say to me before, well, I just wish you would just teach uh, one chapter in the book of this. And, and I'm like, okay, okay, um, but let's talk, about, let's talk about that for a second. You can't. You can't. And people that say that, it's very irresponsible. But it's ultimately what ends up happening is it's presented as ultra-spiritual. The Bible says that let every word be established in the, in the mouth of two or three witnesses. In other words, you can't just take one passage and just stay in that passage and preach that as truth. Otherwise, Judas went and hung himself, and y'all should go and do the likewise. Of course, that's two different passages right there. But Judas went and hung himself because he felt sad. So, I mean, you could preach just, you know what I'm saying. Anyway, the, what I'm trying to explain is you have to be able to see in the Word the full counsel of the character of God. Amen. Not just, a, just, not just a, a, a one, a one talking to these people at this time. And we've got to understand that even the epistles, they're written to the church, but they're written to the church in different places and dealing with different situations. And so it's not always a one-size-fits-all everything. It's you've got to be able to take the whole counsel of the Word of God and put it together, in a sense. Okay? The Bible talks about being like a, a Berean and rightly dividing the Word of Truth. If that means you can also wrongly divide it. But ultimately, when we come, we're not listening to a man. We're listening to the Holy Ghost. He is the teacher, right? And so um, anyway, so we, were, we looked last week at just different places um, about the windows of heaven. We looked at Malachi chapter 3 where he talks about how, how um, bring your tithes and your offerings into the storehouse and see if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing upon you that there's not room. He's basically saying there's, there's, there's a source from outside of where you've been drawing, but you haven't been drawing on it because of how you've been giving or not giving. You've brought lame sacrifices or no sacrifices. You've brought lame offerings or no offerings. We talked about that, how every offering to God is not acceptable. God didn't accept Cain's offering. God accepted Abel's offering. There are offerings that are a sweet smell to God, and there are offerings that are shut the door. 
you know, kind of close the bathroom door, stinky to God. And, uh, and the Bible tells us that, there's a, that the, both prayers and giving come up before the Lord as a smell. And, you know, we, 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 we mentioned this, that you cannot out you can out, maybe outgive somebody in dollars, but you can't out generous somebody. And God, that's how God always looks. He looks at, you see that principle in the widow's might. When she gave of, uh, out of uh, her poverty, she gave excessively. And the Lord, it, the Lord, and so we, anyway, so we're looking at this and just looking at just different places in the word uh, about how there's access to a heaven's supply. And so uh, this is important. We looked at, um, Multiple places where maybe it was be with a boy brought a lunch. We could have uh, did the God first challenge with with uh, when the widow she was making a cake and she had a little bit of meal, a little bit of oil, and Elijah came and said, "Give me first, give me first, and then make yourself a cake." And there was a supply. The maker got involved. This is what we're talking about this morning. The maker of heaven and earth. I lift my eyes to to the hills to where my help comes from. The maker of heaven and earth. Have you ever been there with a kid? And I, I, I'm, I'm doing a little review, and all of a sudden I'm teaching. I want to get back to where I'm at because it's just starting to come, and I'm not here yet. But have you ever been there? Have you ever been there where your kids, and maybe this is not just a kid thing, um, but this is, a, this is an adult thing. This is every person thing where, where something, maybe it's the last cookie, and someone takes the last cookie, and, and it's like, oh. And, and mama says, don't worry, buddy. We can... Oh, you, yes, so you know about this. Because I thought I was the only one that ever had that happen to me. Like, I'm like, oh, don't worry, buddy. We can make more. And I think the Lord would want you and I to catch this this morning. Don't worry. Don't worry. He can make more. We have a heaven, a helper in heaven. Don't worry. He can make more. Like, you go, we got we to gotta say this to our spouse. Hey, don't worry about it. He can make more. Don't worry about it. He can make more. But, but if we're looking to man, right, instead of lifting our eyes to where our help comes from, the maker of heaven and earth, I will get frustrated. I'll get upset. I'll get even angry because of circumstances, because uh, I, maybe I got robbed from, or maybe in a sense, like, you know, things happen, and ah, and I just, I just feel angry. I feel tight. I feel I feel. Mm, I feel constricted, and, and now, uh, in a sense, I feel as if, I feel as if, because no one can make you, I feel as if I'm made to choose something that I didn't want to choose. And so I, 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 now what I wanted to do, I can't do, or, I, or maybe now I won't do what I wanted to do, but really, it's, that, that whole thing is really, now i got to put this, because I didn't have the right things in order, priority, and now, therefore, because I'm not drawn from heaven, I'm drawn, only looking this way, I, I'm super limited. So this is a way of thinking, okay? Again, this is not about getting tithes and offerings and any of this kind of stuff. This is about you and me accessing more than just right here. The favor of God. And we looked at, you know, uh, we looked at in the, in the New Testament, we looked at how uh, T Tabitha or Dorcas, how you, what you, you and I do with our generosity, it actually it can change our life down here. Change your life. Preserve your life. He tells us in, in Matthew chapter 6 to lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Well, you, you lay up. We're going to look at that, and we're going to look at the parallel passage this morning, and we're going to look at why we don't lay up, okay? Um, but we're going to look at that, and we're going to see that what he's saying is what you, when you lay up, you can draw from that. You're to draw from what is laid up. God wants you and I to be drawn from that. And Dorcas, or, or Tabitha, when she passed away, she, she drew from what was her giving. A generous life, a generous life moves heaven. A generous life has, has in store heaven's supply. And the thing about heaven's supply, heaven can do what your money can't do. Honey, heaven pays in wisdom. Uh, we saw it with T Tabitha or Dorcas when she was raised from the dead that that, that, that generosity paid in life. And, and we looked in Psalms how he said, a generous man, God will, God will see to him in his sick bed and he will raise him up and make his bed. This is why you got to go to multiple scriptures and see that here's a, he already said it before and here he's saying it again. 
And here he's showing a testimony. And then we looked at Cornelius and how Cornelius, he went, you know, his alms and, and, and his, his praying, though he was not a, a Jewish man, he loved the Lord. He recognized him as the maker of heaven and earth, the, you know, the, the king of kings. He recognized the blessing on the people of God. He recognized that there was a source greater than the people that was blessing those people. And he was honoring those, that Lord or that God. And so his giving and his alms, or his giving rather, or alms and prayers came up before the Lord as a sweet smell. And God said, let me do something for him. Can I tell you that this is a principle, uh, these are ways of heaven that, that can be abused by man and to, to manipulate people to say, well, you give now so God can move for you. I'm not saying that, but I am saying, I'm not telling you to give right now so God can move for you. I am telling you, though, your giving does move the Lord. You can look at Solomon, your, his giving, his generous giving, not just tipping, his giving. His giving moved the Lord. And you know, you're my giving, and, you're my, and not one thing that's transferred to heaven is ever lost. Not one thing. You know, there's no transfer that gets, there's, there's no prayer that's lost, there's stored up. There's no giving that's lost, it's stored up. And when it paid out, it paid out to his family, his whole family. And God sent an angel to, to Peter, and Peter went and brought, brought the, the message of the gospel and the gift of the Holy Spirit to him and his whole family, his whole household. Man, this is good stuff. This is the windows of heaven. This is what God wants to pour out on you and me, a blessing upon your and my life that there's not room enough to receive. He wants your and my life to be more overflowing so much so that we have more than enough to give unto every good work. That we, are, we, we learn to draw from a source greater than, than ourselves. And we're going to talk about what that source really is, and we're really going to talk, uh, talk about how God gave it to you and me, the ability to move heaven, or what's moved heaven. Let me, let me just, uh, we're going to t- hit, the, hit this this morning. Um, it's just coming out, because I, I tried, that was probably the hardest thing for me, is trying to organize my thoughts of what was here. And, 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 but you know, it's amazing how the Bible tells us that the love of God has been shed abroad in your heart, in Romans 5.5. The love of God. What a gift. Have you ever thought about that? Have, have you thought about that? I, I just was finding myself this last week in the deer stand. By the way, I got a big buck. Um, <clears throat> uh, on Monday, so I got the next four days uh, just to sit and just watch. You know, just the heaven. It's just amazing. But I found myself thinking about the gift that God has given us. You know, you, I, I, I was thinking about the, the parable of the, the talents. And God gives every person something. Right, And so we, sometimes we feel like in our life, well, I only got the one talent, and Pastor Austin's got the five talents, and Pastor Ben, he's got the three talents or the two talents, and, and, and he's got a five, and well, I just got the one. you know. But so many, can we look at talents, and we looked at abilities and graces, but can I tell you the greatest gift that was ever given to you and me? It's the gift of God's love that he put in us. Because the gift of God's love that he put in us is called Compassion. The love of God shed abroad in your heart. And uh, 2 Corinthians one twenty two tells us, uh, I'm going to read it here um, real quick. I want to, uh, before, and then I'll get to these pictures here in just a moment. Um, I, it was a, let me just read it. You don't have to put it up there. Who has sealed us and have given us the earnest spirit, has given us the earnest, uh, earnest of the spirit in our hearts. He gave us not a spirit of, power, uh, of fear, but a spirit of power, a spirit of love, a spirit, of, uh, and he gave us also a sign, sound mind. He gave us, he shed abroad in our hearts the love of God. So here's what you and I have. You have the love of God in you. Did you know that? The love of God. The love of God is in you. The love of God is in me. The love of God. I wonder what the action of love is. So many times we go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and we talk about love is. Love is this, love is that, love is that. But I think we often miss what love really is. Love has its display or its outworking, and you can find this in John 3.16. The way that God displayed love, he gave. We talk about faith works by love, but can I tell you, love works by giving? Love is put into work by ge- generosity is love at work. And when you're, you, and I, when you and I are generous, you see this, whether it's, um, you see where he says that he was moved with compassion. Moved with compassion. 
and he saw the people as sheep having no shepherd. He tapped when Jesus, when he saw that, and he got the little boy's lunch and, and he fed him. He, love tapped a heaven's supply. See, because when you and I yield to the love of God, the, the love of God is, is attached to the will of God, and the will of God always carries the supply of God. It do, he's not limited to your hand. And so generosity, you'll find that it's very aware not of what it doesn't have, but what it does have. It, does, it didn't call two fish and a few loaves, not enough. It didn't call silver and gold, not enough, on the way to the... He, he said, Here, well, here's what I have. How many, have you ever found that out, that when you love your kids, we're coming into a time of Christmas, we're blessing people and, and, and so on and so forth, but I don't know about you, if you've ever been in a place, you might be there now, and this is why one of the things that we had mentioned on the giving, um, we're also going to be giving uh, if you're in a place of need. You can see Pastor Landon or myself and give us your name if you're in need, uh, need of a blessing basket. Um, or let us know. As a church, we're going to be a blessing to you. But if you've ever been in a place where you've been um, just tight and you come into that place of a birthday or Christmas or somebody special to you, somebody that you just love and you want to just bless, but you feel so tight and you can't, but you love and so you can. And what you can't maybe do is just pull out the roll of hundreds and flip them off. But what you can do is you can take that log and your skills or those, that tool that you have and you can create something or you can make an arrangement or you can write a coupon book. And so, in some way, because love always makes a way. Love always makes a way, and, and it says what it can do. And so the gift that God has given us, one of the greatest gifts that he's given us, excuse me, is his love that's been shed abroad in our hearts. The question is, what am I doing with the love? What, am I, what are you and I doing with the love? The love that is given to us to tap his will, which also taps his resources, what am I doing with that love? Is that love... That love and that affection and that compassion, is it misplaced? You know, like lost? Where's it at? Or misplaced on something else, like the things of this world? Or self? I mean, it can be, very simply. But it, this happens, with you, it, we're going to look at this here in a moment, but I wanted to get just first to this story, and that's kind of the setup of what we're going to look at this morning. And I, and I want to give you a very personal story, a very personal testimony that really sets a, is just the whole picture of what I just shared. I like to deer hunt. Um, I like to shoot big deer, but I really like just to sit out in the deer stand. I like to just watch the sunrise and the sunset. I like to watch a quail, which I got one with my bow. This week. Anyway, Ooh, that was fun. Anyway, um, I just love being out and just listening to creation speak. Just that's for me. But I do love hunting big deer. And I don't know about you, but there's something called the game and fish. Anybody ever heard of it? In Minnesota, they call it the DNR, the Department of Natural Resources. Uh, that was instilled by the government because, well, man, you ever seen those old pictures? You know, when they go on a deer hunt and they're hanging up on a pole? There's no limit. It's just like as many as you can kill. Um, but deer are a uh, renewable resource if they are handled and stewarded well. You know what I'm talking about? In other words, if I have 80 acres and I just say, hey, everybody, be on church, we're going to go kill all the deer. And just want to get, that would be kind of irresponsible. Because what, what I would be doing is I would be taking all of the resources and, in a sense, dissolving them. But if the Lord tells you to give something, you're going to have to be aware of something if he tells you to give something that he's not for your detriment. He's wanting to get something to you, get something through you, get to some... He, the love of God's wanting to work. When he speaks to your heart, the love of God's wanting to work, and he's wanting to tap something for you and me that we were not aware of and... If he's directed you to do something, there is a source greater than your supply. Okay? So now, I'm set, set that up because I like to deer hunt. But I, I also love to give people deer hunting opportunities. Okay? This is just, this, I love to do that. I love, whether it's a kid, I have stands set up so kids can go kill a deer. Anybody? It call, like, I'm just, I love it. I love it. And, um... And so just this past week, or about three weeks ago, I got this picture 
Um, and go ahead and put the picture without the drawing on it, the one that, yeah, that picture on a deer camera. Now, that might mean nothing to you. To me, it means a lot. There's nothing there but the sun in this in a picture, when it's facing east in the morning, don't set your cameras facing east, okay, or west, because you're going to get pictures of the sun. You fit, say, it's north or south, or, okay, that's just a little information there, Drew, for you. Um, <clears throat> but this one is faced uh, a little bit to the, uh, a little bit towards the south, uh, southeast, because we wanted to see what was coming. So we we said, you know, it's okay if we get a few extra pictures of sunlight. But this sunlight picture here is. Uh, can you see it? What is it? What's the, on this picture? Can you see it? Anybody see what's there? Okay, put the picture of the drawing, and then we'll put it back up there. Okay? Now put it back up. Now do you see it? It's magnificent, isn't it? Put it back up there again. Okay, that's my tracing on my phone. Okay? <laughs> Not a very good tracing, trying to zoom in. But there's a picture here. And I don't know if you can see the horns in this face. And I, I saw this picture, and I, I saw immediately I saw the deer. And I, saw, I just heard what I, as I was coming into this series about the windows of heaven and how I have a supply that's greater than what you have in the store. Okay? So just, just two days ago, okay, so here's this picture that I sent to my, uh, to, to, uh, from my friends. I'm like, look at this, look at this. And they're like, what is it? I'm like, you don't see it? It's the deer. And, and right in the picture right actually before that, there was actually a, a nice buck in the background. Anyway, so that was just something that ministered to me, that God has a supply, just a picture to you and me that is greater. So <clears throat> on, on Friday, before I, I left to come home this week, um, I'm sitting around in, in a deer camp and uh, get a phone call. Uh, my, my buddy Travis gets a phone call, and he's like, hey, real quick, hold on. Hold on one second. And so he's talking to uh, the couple me and actually Lance Becker. I don't know if he's here. There he is. Um, and so we're on de- deer leases together, us four are on deer leases. And what does that mean? That just means we, we pay for the leases and they're very, they are very expensive. And, um, and so because of that, you kind of have four different hands in the pot that have to be willing to sow if somebody says, hey, I would like to bring a friend. Typically, we pay for somebody's way. Uh, to come, just to be a blessing, and also just to kind of keep it from being feeling bad, you know, that you're taking something out of somebody else. But every guy in this group, Chip Rim, Travis, Lance, and myself, we, we want to sow. Well, Chip calls, uh, and he says, hey, uh, I, I want to bring a guy. He's kind of like, he's just like, kind of like a right-hand guy. He's just been so faithful and just such a, a generous guy, um, and just he's been such a help to me in the ministry, and I just felt like the Lord wanted me to have them come, and you can only come one day, uh, are you guys okay, would you be okay with that? Now, we've never given away a gun hunt, okay? We've given away bow hunts, we've never given away a gun hunt. So this is the first gun hunt that we would have said, yeah, give the nod to that. And we said, yeah, let's give the nod to that. So then over the next day and a half, we proceed to try to figure out the best place to put them. I mean, I bet you there was two hours of conversation about why you should sit this stand or this stand or that stand and phone calls and all this kind of stuff. And, um, and so what was settled on was to sit in the North, uh, North Rifle Blind. Um, and so last night, this man was out in the woods, and he shot the target buck that Lance Becker was trying to hunt for a week, and Travis was trying to hunt for... <laughs> and, uh, and Lance shot a giant this year. Um, but this buck, I want you to see this. this. This guy got this deer last night, and I was just... He's 21 inches wide, just a big, he's never, you know, that's just, he's getting it mounted, you know, it's just, it's like this wide, you know, 21 inches. You don't realize, really realize how big that 21 inches, typically around here you see 14. When, anyway, yeah, you know what? That's sowing. You know what sowing does? Sowing produces growing. Sowing produces multiplication. Sowing opens, what? What does it open? Windows. Windows. Go ahead and put the put that picture of the of the uh, the windows of heaven being poured out into the, my dear stands. No, not that one. <laughs> yeah, that one. This one. There's there's bucks being sent to our places for somebody else, not just for me. 
because I'm going to have more than enough. So that I, we're going to have more than enough so that we can give unto every good work. We're going to have more than enough. That, I have to change my uh, working for a living, okay, move from working for a living to working for giving. I'm, I'm, I'm living to give, become a live to give, a live to give, and let the love of God in you, which, get, which was given to you to create this desire in you to give so that you could tap a supply that's greater than just your own supply. And, and there'll be a pouring out of, 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 of the things that you desire. Can I tell you, in a deer stand, I might be chasing one of those, and instead what I get is I get the wisdom of God concerning a situation and how to lead my family or the word to speak to my son or the word to bring peace. While in a deer stand, I, that sowing produced to me the windows of heaven, which is yeah, thank you, Lord, for the deer. But thank you, Lord, for the stand. Thank you, Lord, for the windows being poured out unto me, a blessing that there's not room enough to receive. More than another thing on the wall, the wisdom of God, the gifts of heaven in my life here and now. I want heaven here on earth now. When he tells us to pray in Matthew chapter, Matthew, uh, I think it's five. I, don't want, I wanted to say six. I think it's six. But anyway, he says, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. He tells us to pray here on earth as it is in heaven. That's more than streets of gold, y'all. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a, a way to respond. Like tapping something greater than yourself. You ever been there? You want to, you, you struggle to respond the way you want to respond. You find yourself Quoting Paul, why do I do what I not want to do? You know, thank you, Lord. So there's a picture, a testimony of a a game camera that I believe, and I thought, I was thinking about this. I was like, you guy could name that. And like God's sending a deer hunter up in the stand. You ever see those pictures at like Bass Pro or Cabela's? A lot of you probably not. But it's like the guy, he's out to the outhouse and the big buck's standing there. The gun's leaning against the tree and he's over into the woods somewhere using the restroom and the big buck's looking at the stand like, what's going on here? But he's MIA, you know? And I was thinking about this. You could call that something like that, like a, 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 a hunter's prayer. Hunter's prayer, like, Lord, I, I really need a, a deer for my family today. And the Lord's like, I got you. And anyway, God cares about the things you care about. Amen. If we'll establish his love. And, and what love really is. It really is an action. And God displayed it very well in his giving. And so this is why it's so important for us to recognize um, God's ways, God's ways, his ways that he, he gave to you and me, the love of God. And, and, and we, we talk about this, that um, because the love of God has been shed abroad in my heart, I can be satisfied by nothing except that which satisfies God's love, like God's love. And so we, we think about this that in James is that every good gift comes from the Lord. There's like no gift you give, no, no good gift comes from people. It's the Lord. You remember when, when God, or not God, but Jesus was talking to the rich young ruler. The rich young ruler came up to him and said, hey, good master. And he said, why do you call me good? There's none good but God. In other words, good, good and goodness, goodness, let me say it this way. What you'll find is when you look at the word good through the Bible, you're going to find so often what's attached or a mindset that's attached is generous. If you say he was a good man, what you would really say, you're saying is he was a generous man. He was generous with his words. He was generous with his hands. He was generous in the way he came to help people all the time. He was generous. You're going to see good and generous hand in hand. When you think about the good Samaritan, and you hear about this story, you see a priest walking by the way uh, along a, where a guy had gotten beaten up and left for dead. The robbers had gotten him. And a priest you could say a pastor. Walking by, well, he's not serving the Lord. Well, that's just a robber, so he goes to the other side. But then you had not just a priest, you had a Levite, which is probably like a Landon, right? Um, maybe not the, the head guy, but he's the helper of the head guy, right? Okay, and I'm not the head guy. You understand what I'm saying, but that, that picture. People of the church or people of, of, you know, we're serving the Lord. Let me just say it this way, the church. Saved individuals, okay? Um, right standing with God. Samaritans didn't have the right standing with the Lord yet. Okay? And so here's this good Samaritan. And the good Samaritan, it's interesting that they use the word good. Good. You know what the good Samaritan was? He was a generous man. 
He said, he gets the guy, he puts him on his donkey, he takes him to the inn, he gives him some money, and he says, uh, if that's not enough, when I return, I'll take care of the rest. You know what that's called? Good. You know what that's called? Generous. You know what that's called? God. You want to tap a God's supply? Generosity is the way that God has given to you and me, and it's by you and I tapping his love. His love, love, this is displayed not just in 1 Corinthians 13, being patient and being kind. You'll find that all of those things stem from being generous, from giving. The only way you can be patient is if you're willing to give more of your time. (laughs) Or you're going to have to give more, or or when you believe the best, you're going to have to give of yourself and the hurt and the, like you'll find that love truly has its roots in generosity. All right, so now uh, we're going to go to a couple passages this morning, and uh, we're gonna, really the parallel passages of Mark, uh, Matthew chapter 6, um, and, and we'll go run over to Luke chapter 12 as well. But I wanted to start back up with, after, have, after having established generosity, uh, and, and, or not generosity, but good meaning generous, right? Um, and, and I want to go back to Jeremiah 6.16. Jeremiah 6.16, this is a... Um, the ancient path, right? So this is what the Lord says, stand at the crossroads and look. In other words, when you're at a place of decision, when you're at a place of which way, which way should I go? Um, ask for the ancient path, where is the good way? Where is the good way? Can I, uh, the good way. What do we establish about good? Generous. Where is the good way? Uh, one of the actually the actual definition. I'm, again, I'm I'm not calling uh, this word uh, th- that it's defined here as being generous. I'm just giving the understanding. When you see that word good, you're going to find generous. Okay. When we said ask the good way, we established this last week. That word there is it basically means the good way, the right way, the right way. How many of you know God's way, the right way, is a way of giving? Forgive up to seven times. Seven times a day? How about seven times 70? Right? He's like, a little more, guys. A little more. This is God's way. A little more. And so he's saying, ask for the good way. Ask for the generous way. What you're going to find, one of the, one of the ways when, he, when you ask him, he, he's going to ask something of you. He's going to ask something of you to lay your life down to him. He's going to ask you something of you to be generous. That's what you're going to find. The good way, is God's way, is always it's, it's a generous way. It's a, it's a way that is not, it's not self-consuming. But sometimes we like to hear the gospel and the good news as being like only that one side of how God wants to see you blessed, but we don't understand that he wants to use you to be a blessing. Right? This is, he wants you to have more than enough. He wants you to, the, the, your good, you to be a testimony of his goodness for ages to come. But when something else is holding your heart, you no longer are, you're not his anymore. You're not, you're not, you're not, you're not in that place where, where he's like, look at here, this is mine. Because, well, your, your, your affections aren't towards him, it's towards everything else. And so this passage that we, we were reading here, he says this, ask where the good way is. Uh, and, and walk in it, and you'll find rest for your souls. It's amazing he, how he says, he says this. One of the things that you'll find is there's nothing as great as giving. Have you ever noticed that? It's not just the, the world knows this. There is nothing that satisfies your soul like giving. Like, you know, you, we start this as a, it, you know, as a young person. You, you don't have to be taught to take, but you also don't really have to be taught to find the flowers for mama, because not just you, there's something in you that just wants it. Because and, and uh, dare I say it, it's kind, can kind of almost move to a place of selfish. Have you ever been there? You want to give just because you want to feel good. I mean, sometimes it's it's at that place because it, it brings a good feeling. So motive matters, right? Um, but God, but it does. It causes your soul to rest. Cause your soul to rest. You said, but he said, you will not. We will not do. We will not follow those ways. Okay, that was Genesis, not Genesis. Jeremiah six sixteen. Well, let's go ahead and go ahead and read a little bit further in that passage. Now, this is about when God's bringing correction to Jerusalem, and they're not going to have His word. They're not going to do what He's asked. Instead, they want to give some kind of offering. You know, 
like just give, give your way out. Like in other words, just I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring you a sacrifice, I'm going to bring you an offering. Let's go ahead and say, this is what the Lord says. Go to the next verse, verse 17. He says, you're not gonna, he says, I appointed watchmen over you and said, listen to the sound of the trumpet, but you wouldn't listen. You wouldn't listen. Next verse. Uh, Therefore, hear you nations, you who are witnesses, observe what will happen to them. Next verse. Hear you earth, I'm bringing disaster on this people for the fruit of their schemes uh, because they have not listened to my words and have rejected my laws. So what he's, what he's after here, what you're going to see in this ne- next two verses, he's not after a sacrifice. Let's keep reading here and we'll, 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 then we'll back up and talk about it. What do I care about incense from Sheba, like Queen of Sheba? Like amazing. The, the best. I don't care about that. What I want is your heart. And this is where in, in Matthew chapter 6, it talks about where your treasure is, that there your heart is. But, but you and I, sometimes we can, we, can, we can say, oh, well, I did my duty, and, and God doesn't have my heart. This is, this is why I, what I'm talking about to, this morning, it's not about just bringing a tithe or bringing an offering. It's about positioning your heart, and every time you give, you, it, it, whether you're giving to uh, the least of these, you're doing it unto the Lord, that you recognize, and I recognize, that I, every time I give, I'm yielding to the word of the Lord. When I give, when I'm, yes, last night this happened. Uh, we were at Panera. We were running around getting uh, stuff for this upcoming weekend, and uh, it's like, hey, I'm hungry, and uh, let's run, run to Panera. So we go there, and there's a, we get done, and my youngest boy calls. These are details you probably don't need to know. I like details, all right? <laughs> and he's like, what? You're at Panera? What? And uh, he's like, how about some of those cinnamon crunch bagels, right? So we go back in to get some cinnamon crunch bagels. We were sitting outside. Details. Um, <laughs> Walk in, and while, while Evan's gra- paying for the bagels, I look over and I see a man sitting by himself. And the Lord speaks really clearly to my heart. Go tell him I love him and pray for him. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> thought we just came in for bagels. <laughs> and I see him, and I'm like, oh, I can't shake it. You know? And I'm like, I am not walking out of here without obeying that prompting. Ah. Okay, this is, has anybody ever been there? It's like he's sitting by himself. He's probably going to think I'm some weirdo. You know, all the reasons in your mind not to follow the prompting, not to be generous, not to be generous. And after about 40 seconds, I make my way over to where, like, I'm going to go towards the bathroom, and I get close. I'm like, hey, sup? And he had his mouth full of food at, when I said sup. <laughs> and I, did, I said, hey, man. And he's like, oh. he had his mouth. He's like, I was like, yeah, that was good timing, Nate. And I'm like, okay, well. Uh, I said, okay. Anyway, so I got to talk with him, and I just said, share my heart. I said, I had, hey, the Lord put you on my heart. I was over there, and I saw you, and the Lord just wanted me to come over here, and felt like he wanted me to pray for you. You think that, would that be okay? And uh, he said, yeah, yeah. I said, is it okay if I lay my hands on you? And he said, yeah, yeah. And so I, I just laid my hands on him. And, I, and you know what I did? I didn't have any words that I came with. God just filled my mouth and filled his heart. It, there was a source that I drew from that I didn't have before. And the windows of heaven were open to that man. And it, the, to, to the point that now this man's in tears, crying in Panera, eating, you know, soup. <laughs> what was that? It was just acknowledging every time. When, when I give, I'm acknowledging, I'm surrendering my will. I'm positioning my heart under his word. When I give. When I give of myself, when I'm generous, in any way, when I'm generous, hey, you need to go and do that. You need to give this deer. You need to go help that guy on this. You need to do this. You need to bring your tithes to the storehouse. You need to, you need to bake them a cake. You need, to, you need to go lay hands on them. Hey, you know that person. You need, whatever, being generous, what you and I do, we are, when we do, when we follow that, we are bringing ourselves under the word. And that's what God was looking for. When you're standing at the place of decision, I was at a place of decision, but I could have not. And I could have came here and I could have taught. And the Lord would have been like, that's not. 
Hope you got. All right, let's go. <laughs> oh, feeling hot. All right, let's go. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, praise the Lord. But here's what he said. He said, I don't care about the Sheba offerings. You can do all this kind of try to make yourself look good. And you can, I want you, I want your heart. I want your heart because I want to lead you and I want to guide you. And I want to lead you into the place to walk in the good things I've prepared for you. This is Ephesians. I want to use you in Ephesians 2 where he says, In ages to come as a testimony of my goodness where you would testify. Look how good he's been to me. How he led me and how he guided me because the eyes of my heart were enlightened and I knew what, that he had a calling to me and it was one of hope and one of about my future. That he, 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 was, he, he was all about my goodness all the while. Every one of his words, as we looked at last week, that his word to me, his laws to me, they are boundaries that fall in pleasant places. So when he directs me to sow in any way in my heart, you can lie to your heart, but your heart won't lie to you and you and I don't do it. What was hap- what's happening is, is we are shutting the door to the windows of heaven to a supply to us that he wants that he knows we're going to need in the days ahead. He knows you're going to need for what you're coming up against. And so he says, sow this now in this season so that you have what is necessary there and what this earth can't provide, but I can provide and I will supply all of your needs according to my riches and glory in That's what he's looking for. Why? Is he looking for a dollar? He's not looking for Sheba offerings. He's looking for hearts that are under his word and that you and I are his hands and his feet here on this earth and that we are about his business as his kingdom. That's what he's looking for. The windows of heaven. He wants to pour out a blessing. He wants to. We're not trying to manipulate him. And nor is he a vending machine God where you pull some levers and push some buttons to get him to move. No, no, his ways are established. He knows the end from the beginning. And he says, this is the way. Walk in this way. Because in this way, there's things I've prepared for you from the beginning. But will you or won't you? Well, I won't sometimes. And why won't I sometimes? I won't because of my gift that he gave me has been misplaced. It's been misplaced. Uh, I want to I go to here. Um, let's go to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Thank you, Lord. It says, now do not, verse 19, do not store for yourselves treasures on earth where moth, uh, rust, destroy, and where thieves break in and steal, but store for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy, where thieves break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye, verse 22, is the lamp of the body. Your eyes, if they're good, your whole body is filled with light. What is good? Generous. When you, when you have a generous eye, all of a sudden there's a way, there's light. Generosity, generosity you'll find in multiple translations, it's not a healthy eye, it's a, a good eye or a generous eye, there's light. There's a way. There's, but it says if the, if the eye is stingy or if the eye is, what does it say? Uh, this is, I'm going to read out of the BSB here. But if your eyes are bad... If your eyes are bad, you know, he actually calls the eye being bad evil. One translation translates that word stingy. He said the whole, whole body is filled with darkness. Can I tell you stingy people don't see how God works with money? That's, that's a fact. There's people in the world that aren't Christians at all, and they understand that the, the generous... They sow and they sow more than they should and yet they continue to grow. And then there's those that withhold and they withhold more and they continue to go to poverty. There's, these are spiritual laws. These are spiritual principles. We say it this way. These are ways of heaven. These are ancient paths. These are ways that have existed long before we were ever here. But he says, your eyes, your whole body will be filled with darkness. You won't see it because of being stingy. 
You won't see how God wants to work. Because, you know, and the only reason you and I could be stingy or why is because, well, I only have five. I can't give you one. That's, that's why. I, don't, I'm, I haven't tapped another source. As a matter of fact, not only that, I think I'm my source and that I made this money. But can I tell you, you didn't make this money? There's a, there's a passage that um, we're going to get there. Um, he says, uh, let's start in verse 23. But if your eyes are bad, your whole body will be filled with darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Verse 24. No one can serve two masters. He will either hate one or love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot, said you cannot serve two masters. Man, I wish I wouldn't have got interrupted myself where I was going that, a little while ago. I don't have notes. I have a brain and a heart. I feel like I'm on Wizard of Oz. <laughs> Tin Man and the Scarecrow. Or okay. <laughs> I don't know where that came. That was the courage, you know. Put them up. Put them up. <laughs> Praise the Lord. What were we talking about? We were talking about God. God wants, he, he wants you and I to serve. Oh, misplaced affections. Okay? Uh, he want, we, we, so many times, sometimes we misplace, we misplace our affections. We misplace them. We put them on, on the wrong things. And, and what ends up happening, and, and I, didn't, I can't find that. It's right there, but I'm just not getting there. So let's, let's, uh, let's go. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Let's see if I can scroll through a, a note. Maybe I'll have a jumping off point, all right? Because I've lost my, my spot in my mind, all right? <laughs> Help me out here. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Let's go, let's go to the parallel passage. Let's go to Luke chapter 12. And we're going to just start in... Um, Okay, let me let me let me go back. I think I, I think I might have found it. That that's it. That's all right. Okay, Matthew chapter six, verse twenty-four. No one can serve two masters. Why do we miss we miss, we miss we misplace our affections? What happens oftentimes? But it's not so much that we um, don't love God. It's not that you don't. And I want you to see this. I, I had never seen this before. In this passage, sometimes um, when we talk about money and, and when we hear about money, it's one of those things is like it's kind of, it's really, it is attached to our heart. And so you can say something about money and it kind of can hurt people's heart. Like it can kind of make them upset, really, truly, right? If I say, hey, everybody get your wallets, you'll find that like your heart, <laughs> right? Like there, it's, it's true, Okay. Um, but what, so when we read Matthew 6 and he talks about laying not for yourself up, do not store for yourself up treasures in, on, on earth, but store for them up in heaven where they're not going to be destroyed. And then he says it's important how you see because if you have a generous eye, that means you are drawing from a place that has more than enough. Okay, But if your eye is dark, it's because you're drawing from only this place. And, and so sometimes we misplace our affections. And, and what happens is it's not we don't give we, we don't give or give to people because we don't love them or we don't love God. It's something else has happened and fear has gotten in. Fear. We're going we're gonna to see this parallel passage of all of Matthew 6 and then Luke chapter 12. But I want you to see here, it says, no one can serve two masters. No one. Either. Somebody underline circle either. Either. There's a couple of options here. Do we recognize that there's two things that can happen? You can love one and hate the other. You can love the world and you can hate God. Anybody in here on a Sunday morning loving the world and hating God? Typically not the case. Typically not the case. Now it could be, but typically it's not the case that you love the world and you hate God. But something else could happen. Or, or, so there's another, there's another option. And this is where a lot of times we find ourselves, and we'll find that this is really parallel to Mark chapter 4, verse 19. It says this, you'll either, either you will hate one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one. 
What does that mean? I got to do what he says. And despise the other. You can't serve both God and money. It's not oftentimes that we don't love the Lord. It's that we have to serve this one, and I can't, I think less of this one. I can't, ah, I don't think he's going to come through. I don't, th- I don't think, I don't think, like what I've heard in church about my God and, and about how he can, I'm not sure that he will, so i got to make sure I serve in this way. I mean, I love him. I really do love him. I just don't think as much of him. And so I can't give. I would like to give. I really would like to give tithes and offerings and alms and the guy on the street corner. I really would like to, except for when I'm accusing him about being a worthless bum, which I'm actually listening to the devil because he's the accuser. But anyway, that's a side point. I would really like to do this, but I can't. I got to do what this one says, and I got to pay this, and I got to do this, and I got to do this, and provide for this, and I need that side by side, and I need to get that boat and the bigger house because that's new, and this and that. And, and really, we need to go to Disney because they went to Disney, and I've been wanting to go on a cruise because, and, and you know, it's vacation time and it's Christmas time, and so I need to take care of my own self, you know, because the Bible does say he either doesn't take care of his family, he is worse than an infidel. I don't want to be one of those, you know. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> got me out there. It's not that I don't love God. It's just that I don't think he can. I, I just don't, God, I don't, I don't think you can. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take care of it. And I'm going to go through life apart from a supply of heaven. And the worst part about this is, and we're going to get into this next week, is um, I'm passing on to my kids. Not, not a supply, not a blessing, an empowerment to prosper. I'm, I'm passing on to my kids, you better do this, and you better go to college, and you better make good grades so that you can make enough money, so that you can have a good life, and that that money will be able to buy you what you desire. That's what I'm passing on. Instead of the blessing. When I recognize that God has given me, and he's empowered me to prosper. Abraham established that when he get, gave tithes to Melchizedek. He gave, uh, he gave, recognizing that the battle was won, not of his own hand, but it was the Lord. And Melchizedek, who had no beginning and had no end, who was the Prince of Peace, he came out and he blessed Abraham. And he gave him bread and wine and he blessed him. And Abram recognized something. He didn't just recognize something, that there was a source, but he passed that source on to the next generation. Abraham, who? He passed it on, and a hope not just those kids knew about a God and a source that was greater than themselves, where walls would fall down and seas would part, and there would be deliverance from and deliverance to. Not just them, but all the nations knew that their God, their God, they knew. And God wants to use you and me to testify about our God. But so many times, what we're passing on is a self-sufficient lack of greatness. Like, where's the awe of God? Where is the honor due my name? Where is the honor? The who, Mufasa. Where is the... you want me to do that we're passing on to our kids what does God want you to do well I don't know everyone's doing this I don't want to know that I want you to seek the Lord and I want you to do what he wants you to do and I want you to know that he'll supply according to his word and if you'll live, live from that place we'll be doing the God things now am I saying disqualify college no I'm saying follow God. It could be college. It might not be. Have a conversation with your kids about who's leading your life. Is it the school counselor that is leading the 800 and says, well, here's the good way. Because there's a lot of crossroads they're crossing. You guys are crossing right now. 
You're crossing crossroads all the time. Can I tell you, if you're not living generously and you're young and you're crossing crossroads, can I tell you right now you're establishing a way where it's you going it your own way and your own self and you will have to supply according to your work and your labor instead of the favor of God upon your life? Ask for the ancient. Lord, what do you say about this? I want to do it your way. And giving is one of the chief ways that God displayed. He put in us his love that is this desire to give and to tap windows, windows of heaven. And we established that. Malachi, I mean, all these different places, he gave it to us. A little boy, and a little boy in his lunch, you know what he said? "Uh, Daddy, you can have mine. Have you ever had a little boy tell you that, or your little kid, or your grandkid? You, buddy, you know, like yours all spills on the ground or something, and they say, you can have mine. And you're like, oh, no, it's okay, buddy. Oh, man, thank you, Lord. Um, thank you, Jesus. Let, let's, let's look, Luke, 20, let's look, Luke 12, 32 through 34. It says, do not be afraid. So this is what gets in. It's not, just, it's not that you don't love. It's not that I don't love. But it's sometimes what happens is the spirit of love that was given to me, instead a spirit of fear is what I'm listening to. So I'm not listening to the spirit of love that has good. I'm listening to the spirit of fear. And he says this. He says, do not be afraid, little flock, for your father is pleased to give you the kingdom. Listen to this. It says, sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide for yourself purses that do not wear out, uh, an exhaustible, inexhaustible treasure in heaven. What? Wait, this is like, this is lay not for yourself up treasures on earth, but lay for yourself up treasures in heaven. It's not people that you're laying up. You're laying up treasure, but how are you laying up treasure? Through giving. This is what he says. Well, I don't have anything to give. One of the things that I think is the biggest joke is I don't have anything to give. So you always have something. I, I, I remember, I remember, I can't remember who it was that was talking about this. It's like, how many, what do you have laying around at home that you're not using that you should put on Facebook Marketplace and find to say, Lord, I, I have, what do I have that you want me to sow? Maybe to sow the thing or sow the thing to get some seed and then sow some seed. See, God's provision is brought to you always in the form of seed, but the seed's provision is only released with will. The corn, the seed's there. The provision's there. The power's there. But will that grow? That's up to you, is whether or not you or I will plant it. So, although God's source and provision is given to you in the form of seed, even word, okay? We see Mark chapter 4, the seed, the word, He gives you the word, but will you sow it? Will you declare the word? Will you sow it? Or will you just say, well, it doesn't work, and you saw enough, and you saw mom and dad, and you've been in this for 12 years, 13 years, 15 years, you've been going about it, and now you've grown weary and doing good, and in time when you were supposed to harvest, you quit. So will, quit. See, because quitting is a choice. And this is why when you play a ball game or you do anything, you don't quit. You do everything for the glory of God all the way. Now, can I say the competition sometimes gets a little messy? Absolutely. But can I say this? That no matter whatever you do, we should always teach what we're doing to give it our all for the one, not because of my pride. Run to win the race, not to beat the opponent. Anyway. Thank you, Lord. So do not be afraid, little flock. Your Father is pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions. Give to the poor. Provor, provor, provor. Give to the poor. Provide yourselves with purses that will not wear out. An inexhaustible treasure in heaven where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Let's go to Luke 12, 13 through 24. Or actually, it's through 34. This is that whole passage. So it's interesting. He's talking about, um, actually, yeah, let's look at this. And so, uh, so this Ma- Matthew chapter 6, if you were to keep going on, so I'm sorry if I'm bouncing around a little bit here. Matthew 6, where we were reading, maybe you've read this verse before, Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness or his ways, and all these things will be added to you. God wants to add to you. Giving is not subtraction, it's actually multiplication, okay? 
This is what I, so when you sow 30, 60, 100 fold, okay? It's not subtraction, it's multiplication. But so many times when we sow, we think subtraction, okay? <clears throat> but this whole passage of, of Matthew chapter 6, is, it's the parallel is Luke chapter 12. So this is why we're reading this. And how this is brought up in Luke 12 gives us some, some context of what Jesus was talking about. Someone said in the crowd, verse 13, Luke 12, 13, someone in the crowd said to him, teacher, my brother, uh, tell my brother to divide the, his inheritance with me. Tell him to give me my, give me my, give me my what's going to you know, set me up for life days. You know, dad died, I want half. You know how many times you have seen money fights because of somebody dying and what was, should have been a, a grieving or, or just celebrating of life and said, now it's give me mine. Family's divided. He says, teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, man... <laughs> Who appointed me judge or executioner between you? And he said to them, watch out and guard yourselves against every form of greed. Greed in this culture, it's like, it's, it's in the air. It's like, it's like the summertime when you'd walk outside, it's the smell of grass. It's... Somebody's mowing their lawn. Sometimes it's stronger here, or some, but it's there. Greed is, it's here. And so he says, watch yourselves against every form of greed. For one's life, and now this would be completely against what everybody's saying right now. Social media, TikTok, what people call success. One's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. You are thinking that money's going to bring you the joy, buddy, man, Okay. Actually, I painted for a guy's ha- ha- guy. One time, this is a side note. It's funny. I painted for a guy. One time, his name was Man. Okay, He was uh, uh, Vietnamese, but his name was Man. And he wouldn't answer like you'd be trying to talk to him. And finally, the electrician got so frustrated with him. He goes, listen, Man. And Man said, huh? It's <laughs> pretty funny. His name was Man. Anyway, <clears throat> so I'm going to call this guy Man. And he's like, Jesus is like, hey, Man. What's going to take care of your life? What's going to bring you the life that you think you're going to have? It's not the possessions. It's not the car that you're looking for. It's not the, the new the lift. It's not, the, it's, it's not that. Hey, man, it's not that. Your life, the life that you're looking for, the life that you crave, it doesn't consist in the abundance of your possessions. He told them a parable. So here's this parable. He says, The ground of a certain rich man produced in an abundance, so he thought to himself, Again, harvest. What shall I do since I have nowhere to store my crops? Then he said, this is what I'll do. Again, I'm going to do what I want to do, what I, all I can think to do. I will tear down my barns and I'll build bigger ones. This is verse 18. And there I will store my grain and my goods. Then I will say to myself, you have plenty of good things laid up for yourself many, many years. Take it easy. Drink, eat, be merry. But God said to him, you fool. You fool. This very night your life will be required of you. Then who will own what you've accumulated? This is how it will be for anyone who stores up treasures for himself, but is not rich toward God. He's laying this out there thinking that, man, this right here, this word will preach without me saying another thing. Right there. Just This is how... He, he thinks that it was him that got the wealth. This is what's happened. This is this, his thought, I got a harvest. I'm going to do what I want to do. He doesn't recognize it was God that gave him the power to get this wealth or gave him the strength and that it was God that was holding up his bre- very breath of his life of every day. God was holding him up. But he didn't recognize God as that source. And so here, here he is. He says, this is what it's going to be like to those who are not rich to God. What he should have been thinking, and this is what God is saying, how can I be generous? Living to give. Because he, 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 God supplied him with some source here. Kind of like Tabitha and Dorcas, or Dor- Tabitha who was called Dorcas. You remember? She was generous toward the widows. And when her life was required of her, Peter was sent, went into the house, said, Tabitha, get up. She opened her eyes. Interesting. 
Do you think God was given a source here? Maybe for this man, he's telling a parable, and then he, we watch the same story unfold, except for this lady, she, she used her supply to, to, to affect things here on this earth. Is that not what the Bible says? Did you see that? Did you hear that? So does it matter what you and I do? Yeah, but you and I can do whatever we want to do. But sometimes what happens is, it's not that love is so much, we don't love this, it's that it's misplaced and fear has gotten in, and we don't think God can do. Let's keep on going, and we're going to look at one last verse here. Then he said, um, verse 22, then Jesus said to his disciples, therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life. This is what happens, worry. Worry gets in. It sounds like Mark 4, 19. If you have that one, go ahead and put that one up, and and then we'll finish uh, in Luke 12. But the worries of this life... You could say fears. This is the things that gets in right here. This is the, the third thing. Um, this is where a lot of times Christians are at. Fear. Place of fear. Where, where, the, where the seed has been planted. We sit here. We, but yet, we're not, we can't do the word because of fear. We try. We, we do it to a certain extent until, until fear comes. Until Worries of this life, or, so there's, there's three things here. So there's worries or fear. There's deceitfulness. So that if, I, if I had that, then I'd have this. If I'd, if I'd, it's, it's a lie. I, I just need this. I need, to, I need to get to the place where my house is debt-free. So, so then what? Then what? Can, 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 I, can I just give you the, just a newsflash about debt-free house? Your house payment, even though it's going to cost you... That three hundred thousand dollar note is going to cost you six hundred thousand dollars over a thirty year note. Okay, that's that's a lot. Okay, yeah, that's not good. That's just, but but even still, it's like fifteen hundred bucks a month. Okay, right? Unless you got a new loan on a really high interest rate. Okay, and fifteen hundred. What 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 what? And that goes so fast. Fifteen hundred dollars extra a month you're going to have to do now. Now what? I thought you were going to get to. Can I tell you? Gas and groceries cost more than that. Can I tell you? Like, I don't know, but you have a cell phone. Like, it's like four hundred bucks a month. You're like, well, I got three boys, and that's five phones. It costs to just have anything. So you, we have this idea. Oh, I'll just get my house paid off, and then I'll have all this extra money. You have an extra fifteen hundred dollars a month that's not allotted. And so we're trying to do all this stuff, and we're saying no to what God's saying to do. And I'm saying, I just got to keep on making my own strength work. I got to make my own strength work. The Lord's like, I wanted to pour out this, and I wanted to lead you into a place of favor, and I wanted to open the door that no man could shut, and I wanted this, but you would not. Because you were afraid, or there was this promise, a deceit, and it was a lie. That's the thing about deception. It's, it was a lie that said, if you have this, then you could do that. No, you couldn't. You can do what you want to do. And we're lying to ourselves when we say we want to do this for the Lord, but we won't. Because you don't want to. What you want is what you want. And it's important for us to assess that within our own selves. Instead of sit and lie to ourselves about what I really want. Tell yourself the truth. Because you'll either love one or hate the other, or you'll serve one and you'll despise the other. Can I tell you how you serve one? You do what it says. When you do what that one says, you tell the other one what to do. Can I tell you, if you want to serve the Lord, you start telling your money where to go. You start stewarding it. And the first place you tell it is you say, as for me and my house and as for me and my money, we're serving the Lord. You start telling money what it's going to do. You start telling where it's going to go. And you don't tell it. Don't let it tell you any longer what you can and can't do. No, this is what's going on. This is how it's happening. Well, then you're not going to be happy and you're going to have to do this. Who are you? You're not my Lord. I serve a Lord whose supply is inexhaustible. And I don't know where, where this got in, but we have got to get God off the despise chart and back into the place that he can and he will. He is the maker of the heavens and the earth. I will lift my eyes to the hills to where my help comes from. The maker, the maker. Guess what? He can make more. He can make more. 
You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what he's asked me to do because you know why? He can make more. When I go into Walmart and I, and, and I, I got to, you know how I, part of the way I start making my money, listen to me? I say, I want to give at least $20, okay, wherever you're at. $20 a week when I'm out and about. Great. Where's it at? What, what, what fold of the billfold is it in? Get it out, put it in there. No, 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 that's not for Chick-fil-A or for a coffee quick. No, this dollar, I'm saying no to myself here so I can say yes to here. Because the Lord was leading my heart to be able to sow because he wanted to open an avenue to me. Oh. The maker. He's the maker. So we have the worries of this life. Mark 4, 19. We have deceitfulness of wealth. It lies. And the desires for other things, misplaced love, come in and they choke out the word and they make it unfruitful. Where does my help come from? It comes from the Lord. Psalms 121, the maker, I lift up my eyes, so I will. Lift up my eyes to the hills. Where, from where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to slip. Your protector will not sleep. Behold, the protector of Israel doesn't sleep, nor does he slumber. See, the Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun will not strike you by day, nor will the moon reveal you at night. The Lord will guard you from all evil. He will preserve your soul. The Lord will watch over your coming and your going both now and forevermore. I will lift up my eyes where my help comes from. I find it interesting. Jesus looked up to heaven. Lord, thank you. Thank you. Finish reading the last part of uh, Luke 12, and, and this will be the close. Just let it speak. And Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you, do not worry. Stop worrying about your life, what you're going to eat, and what you're going to drink, what you're going to wear. For life is more than food, and the body is more than clothes. Remember the ravens. They do not sow. They do not reap. They don't have storehouses, and they don't have barns. Yet God feeds them. Remember how much more valuable you are than they. Which of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? So, hmm, I'm sorry, I gave you the, I think I'm in, uh, I'm in, I'm in Matthew right now, I'm sorry. This is Matthew. I, don't, I wasn't watching this, I was watching this. Uh, so, if it cannot, uh, who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life so if you cannot do such a small thing why do you worry about the rest consider how the lilies grow they do not labor they do not spin yet I tell you not even Solomon in all his glory was adorned like one of these if that's how the clothes, God clothes the grass of the field which is here today and gone tomorrow into the furnace how much more will he clothe you O ye of little faith and do not be concerned what you're going to eat or drink. Do not worry about it. For the Gentiles of this world strive after these things. But your Father knows that you have need of them. But seek first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added to you. I, wanted to, I, want, I thought I was reading um, the, the, the passage that's in between. It's the exact same parallel of, of Luke Luke 12 is the exact as Matthew chapter 6. You can go and take that home for homework. But I find it interesting that both of these passages, he talks about don't worry. And oftentimes the windows in, uh, of heaven, they're shut to us because of worry. Because you, your and my actions truly do matter. James tells us that faith without works is dead. So when we quote in Ephesians that we are saved by grace through faith, can I tell you that faith is not active without corresponding action? So you can't even apply that verse if there's not some kind of action. But what keeps you and me from exercising what we believe and what we want to do, oftentimes it's not lack of love. 
Because God has given that to you. It's abundance of fear. But my God, he said that he hasn't given you a spirit of fear. He's given you a spirit of power and a spirit of love and a sound mind. And if you and I will listen, learn to listen to the spirit of love, which is one of generosity, one of being generous, and therefore you are acknowledging every time you give, every time you give of your words, in a, in a, this is how the gifts of the spirit come into operation. You be generous to go and pray when the Lord leads you and prompts you. It's a gift not of you. It's a gift of the Spirit. Can I tell you the gifts of the Spirit? We're talking about just of, just of another, just right here. Can I tell you that's the windows of heaven? Can I tell you that the windows of heaven and the gifts of the Spirit, we're talking about all things that pertain to our life? Our finances, our health, the needing of a word, a, a miracle, a, a word of knowledge, a discerning of spirits, recognizing what you need to rebuke, what re- all of this. Can I tell you that all of it's connected? And if we'll learn to acknowledge the spirit of love more than the spirit of fear, and we'll learn to, to uh, 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 direct, direct our money. Direct it. You tell your dollar where it's going to go first. And this is what is so key. You tell it where to go first. This is how you rule over something. You don't let it have its way. You don't let it have its way. How many times do I got to tell you? It's like that, that volunteer teacher, the substitute teacher who comes in and she's going to be buddy-buddy with everybody. And so she lets everything kind of slide a little bit. You know what I'm talking about? And then she has to try to bring the law down. It doesn't work so good. Why? Because she allowed everybody to do their own thing instead of saying, now listen, I want to lay this, make this clear. I'm here in place of this. You're going to listen. You're going to do this. You're going to do your homework and this. And if that's done, this is what's going to happen. If that doesn't happen, you're not going to like me very much. And all of a sudden, they like her. Why? Because she established. Establish. Establish. Who is Lord of your life? You do it when you direct your dollars. When you direct your dollars, what happens is, is no longer are they directing you, but you are able to live from that place of a heart uh, li- yielded to the Lord, and the windows of heaven are open to you. Access. Every time you give, you acknowledge, and you, you, you testify of what you're drawing from. Father, thank you this morning for your word that was spoken. Thank you for your ways. Why don't we just stand this morning? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, thank you. Why don't we just lift our hands to the Lord just as a sign of surrendering to him. Our lives are the work of our hands. Father, I thank you this morning for words that you directed. A a, a message, a series of messages that you deposited in me because you wanted them released in this house to these people because you want a harvest you want a a, a different source to be trusted in so today we just say Lord we trust you as our source open the windows of heaven thank you for showing us how that they're open to us. You said how they're open. Lord, I thank you for a trust in you. Not a spirit of fear, but a sound mind. I just release that in the name of Jesus over this people. A sound mind, complete and whole. In the avenues of where the darts and the fiery darts have been coming in, we just we, we barricade that right now in the name of Jesus and we say that my God will supply all of my needs my God is my healer my God is my source I'm drawing from him he's my father he's my deliverer he is where my help comes from I no longer look just here I look and I lift my eyes instead to where my help comes from I thank you you're the maker just tell him I thank you you're the maker I thank you, you're the maker of hearts. You're the maker of of, of liver. You're the maker of of everything that we need. You're the maker of joy. You're the maker of peace. You're the maker of everything that we need. We lift our eyes and we say, you're the maker. 
lift you high. No longer in a place of despise in our hearts. No longer thinking, I don't know if you can. Father, thank you for a rise of you on the throne. I thank you for prayers and faith released, words and giving and, and to, to those in need as directed by you and therefore supplied from heaven. I thank you for it. We receive it and we declare you today as our source. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Before we go this morning, uh, if you're here today and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, the Bible tells us that God loved us so much. He loved the world so much that he gave his only son, Jesus, to pay a price for you and me, for, to pay a price for our sins. And so if you're here today and you're not right with Jesus, you don't know where you'd spend eternity if your life was required of you today, uh, I want to give you an opportunity to just make Jesus the Lord of your life. Uh, Go ahead, every head bowed, not bowed, every head up, every eye open this morning. If you want to give your life to Jesus and you never have or you need to get right with him, why don't you just go ahead and lift your hand. Everybody looking around, see if you see any hands. Sometimes I miss them with these lights. But anybody here that wants to give their life to Jesus today, maybe you've got to rededicate your life and order your steps with a decision. I'm going to ask you to lift your hand if that's you. Anybody? Ask the person next to you, do you, do you need to do anything? Do you need to get your life right with Jesus? I know some of these husbands and wives are like, you better repent. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Father, thank you so much for your face turned towards this people. Let our face and our hearts turn towards others. In the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week. We will see you next Sunday. We don't have service this Wednesday. Happy Thanksgiving.